NFL Week 9 Power Ranking. So coming in at number 32, we have the Houston Texans who lost to the Titans, even though Malik Willis only had 55 passing yards. At number 31, I have the Detroit Lions. I thought they were going to pull off the upset versus the Dolphins. That was my big upset pick of the week, and it was looking good early on for the Lions, but they fell apart late in this game. This defense just gave up a ton of yards to this Dolphins offense. At number 30, I have the Carolina Panthers. Just an absolutely heartbreaking loss for them in overtime. PJ Walker threw one of the prettiest passes, if not the best pass of the year to tie this game up, but they still ended up losing in overtime thanks to, you know, some field goal and extra point difficulties. At number 29, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers. They got absolutely obliterated by the Eagles. At number 28, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars. What is going on with the Jaguars? A couple weeks ago, they looked like a very promising team. Now they lose to the Broncos and Trevor Lawrence is looking super mid. At number 27, I have the Las Vegas Raiders. How did the Raiders put up zero points versus the Saints? That gave up over 40 points to the Cardinals last week. A really bad and a really surprising loss. At number 26, I have the Indianapolis Colts. They couldn't hold on to their lead late versus the Commanders. They lost by one with just over 20 seconds left in this game. At number 25, I have the Denver Broncos. I guess you could say Russ's traveling calisthenics or antics, whatever you want to call them, worked because the Broncos got the dub versus the Jaguars. At number 24, I have the Cleveland Browns. They absolutely demolished the Bengals. Just a really big win for this squad. This defense and pass rush finally played how we expected them to play this season. And number 23, I have the New Orleans Saints. A great bounce back win for them versus the Raiders. I was really surprised this defense came out and played the way they did. Didn't give up any points versus the Raiders after a really tough performance last week versus the Cardinals. And number 22, I have the Green Bay Packers. I'll be honest here. It wasn't as bad as a loss as I thought it could be from the Packers. They kept it kind of close and they weren't totally embarrassed by one of the best teams in the league on national TV. Yeah, it wasn't pretty, but not a total embarrassment. At number 21, I have the Chicago Bears. So yes, this defense played really bad versus Cowboys offense, but the good news is this. Justin Fields is getting better and better every single week. Yeah, some weeks he's just getting, you know, a little bit better, a tiny bit better, but he's getting better and better as the season goes on. And I think he's the guy for Chicago. At number 20, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Another loss for this Bucks team. I mean, they just look absolutely lifeless out there on both offense and defense. This team needs a really, really big spark to save their season. At number 19, I have the Arizona Cardinals. So yes, they lost to the Vikings, but they were competitive with a really good team that is Minnesota. DeAndre Hopkins has been balling out in his first two games back. In this one, he had 159 receiving yards and a touchdown. At number 18, I have the Atlanta Falcons. So they are the kings of the NFC South right now. They eked out that overtime win versus the Panthers, or maybe you could say the Panthers gifted them this win. Whatever you want to call it. It comes down to the fact that Young Wei Ku made that kick in overtime, and Pinheiro could not make his field goal or extra point for the Panthers. At number 17, I have the Washington Commanders. So another big win for the Commanders, and they bring their record back to 500. Taylor Heineke, he's obviously not one of the top quarterbacks in the league. He's really a backup, but there's something about him. I don't know. He just has this it factor. He just makes it happen. It's super fun to watch him play, and he has this kind of clutch gene too. Like what we saw in this game versus the Colts, he led them on a comeback drive, and they were able to get into the end zone with a QB sneak with just over 20 seconds to go. At number 16, I have the Los Angeles Rams, another loss to the 49ers, and this defense has just really been struggling all season long, and they drop below 500. At number 15, I have the New England Patriots. Speaking of teams that dominate their division rivals, the Patriots continued their winning ways versus the Jets. This defense got back on track, and Mac Jones has to have some more confidence now going forward. At number 14, I have the Cincinnati Bengals. Yuck, just ugh, what a terrible, terrible loss versus a Browns team that has struggled this season. They were absolutely, absolutely demolished by them. At number 13, I have the Los Angeles Chargers. They were on a bye, but they end up moving up because of other teams' losses. At number 12, I have the New York Jets. I'm really concerned about Zach Wilson, guys. Like, his decision-making is really really bad. Like some of these picks he throws, I'm like, what are you doing? Like what made you think you should throw the ball in triple coverage there? I think he's the player that can hold back this Jets team because besides him, this team is looking really, really good. At number 11, I have the San Francisco 49ers. So I really don't know how to feel about this 49ers team because they have some really good wins this season, like their win this past weekend versus the Rams. But then they also have some not so good losses, some pretty ugly losses. The thing is, I feel like this 49ers team knows how to peak at the right time. And CMC is looking like a totally new player on this 49ers offense. Three total touchdowns 
this past weekend. Crazy. At number 10, I have the Tennessee Titans. Derrick Henry carried this offense to a victory versus the Texans and pushed their win streak to five games. At number nine, I have the New York Giants. Two fumbled punts sealed this Giants loss versus the Seahawks. At number eight, I have the Seattle Seahawks, an impressive performance by the Seahawks defense versus the Giants. I think their run D really stepped up big in this game after struggling earlier this season. And Geno Smith just continues to have a spectacular season. At number seven, I have the Miami Dolphins. Tua stays undefeated in complete games he plays. He went off in this one, but guys, this defense, it scares me. They gotta be better. They're giving up a ton of yards. Defense, you gotta be better. At number six, I have the Baltimore Ravens, a win for them on the road on a short week versus the Bucs. Lamar got it done without Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman for the majority of the game. At number five, I have the Dallas Cowboys. So their offense went absolutely crazy in their win versus the Bears. At number four, I have the Minnesota Vikings. So this team just continues to win. They're six and one now. Zadarius Smith is such a game changer on this defense because he really makes up for this secondary not being so good. At number three, I have the Kansas City Chiefs. They were on a bye. At number two, I have the Buffalo Bills. A nice win for them on Sunday Night Football versus the Packers, which was probably Josh Allen's worst game statistically, but the defense stepped up and didn't allow this Packers offense to take advantage of that. At number one, I have the Philadelphia Eagles. They absolutely dominated the Steelers to stay undefeated. So yes, they are number one for now, but guys, the Bills are just, they're right there behind them waiting for the Eagles to lose their first game because if the Eagles do end up losing a game this season, the Bills might be there at the number one spot. I want to know your guys' top five teams in the NFL right now. Let me know in the comments down below. Peace.